Welcome back to a new episode on Chemistry Made Easy with Bright Edo. In today's video lesson, I'll be teaching on empirical formula and molecular formula determination from percent composition. An empirical formula is like saying that this is the simplest formula a compound can have. Empirical formula is like saying the simplest formula a compound can have. Like for example, we have glucose and glucose is basically C6H12 O6. This is glucose, but this actually is the molecular formula of glucose. Now, this is glucose. This is the molecular formula of glucose. Molecular formula talks about the actual mole ratio of that particular compound. And I said that empirical formula is the simplest formula of a compound. So what is the simplest way we can write this compound? That means when we divide through by 6, when we divide through all of them by 6, we can have a simple formula. So let's try that. We divide 6 by 6, we get 1. We get 2 and we get 1. So what becomes the empirical formula? It is basically C1, H2O1. So the point I'm trying to make here is this. Empirical formula is the simplest formula of a compound, while molecular formula is the actual mole ratio of that compound. This is the molecular formula of glucose, which is c 6 h 6 but the empirical formula of glucose is just CH2O, you see, C1H2O1. So that is for that. So let's quickly move over to the question for today. Now, under this aspect, we'll be solving various questions. Now, the question requires us calculating the empirical formula of this compound, which we'll calculate now, and the molecular formula of this compound. So, let's quickly start. Now, the question says, a compound is composed of 52.14% carbon and 13.3% hydrogen and 34.73% oxygen by mass. What is the empirical formula of the form? What is the empirical formula of the compound? And also, if the molecular mass of the compound is 138.204 grams per mole, what is the molecular formula of the compound? Now they've given us the atomic masses of each element. Now you can see, first of all, this is a pattern or this is a simple way we can actually solve this question without stress. Now, me writing this table here is to solve for A first, which is empirical formula. Now, let's start filling in this table. First of all, symbol of elements. Now, what are the elements involved in this question? We have just three elements, carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. So here I'll write carbon with the symbol C. Next, we have hydrogen with the symbol H. And next, we have oxygen with the symbol O. So basically, after doing that, that is for the symbol of elements. That is for the symbol of elements. Now, it must be noted that in chemistry, percentage is taken to be mass. Take note, percentage can be the same as mass. Now, this is what I mean. Here, talks about the mass or the percent of the element. Now, talking about carbon, according to the question, what was the percentage of carbon? It is 52.14%. So we we'll simply write it here 52.14%, or you say 52.14 grams. So that is for that. So let me just see grams here. So let me roll here. Now, what becomes what becomes the percent composition of hydrogen according to the question? It is 13.3 grams or percentage now what becomes the percentage composition of oxygen as seen in the question it is 34.73 grams i said mass and percentage can be the same thing now from this part of the table it says mole of element that means we divide by the molar mass of this element you know calculating number of mole in chemistry is simply saying mass over molar mass. So basically, we have to calculate the number of moles of each of these elements. You can see we've got in the masses. I told you that ma mass and percentage can be written as same. Okay, we can call 52.14% 52.14 grams. So let's quickly do that. 
Now, you can see here more of elements. So, we are using the formula which is mass over molar mass. So, what is the mass? So, 52.14 all over 12 is equal to, let's do that. So, let's see what we get. That is uh, 4.345. Don't approximate here. Just write all the values. You've got it. 4.345 moles, okay, because we are calculating number of moles, moles. Now, let's calculate the number of mole of hydrogen in the compound is by saying mass over molar mass. So, hydrogen mass is 13.3 over the molar mass, which is 1. So, basically, we're getting the same thing with 13.3 moles. And lastly, for oxygen, which is mass over molar mass, which is 4.73 grams all over the molar mass, which is 16. So, let's see what we get. So we get 34.73 over 16. That is 2.171. So basically, these are the number of moves of all the elements making up this compound. We are to determine the empirical formula now. So the next step requires us dividing by the smallest value. Now, this is what it actually means. Now, they said that we should divide through by the smallest value. Now, looking at all of these values, which is the smallest? Is it carbon? Is it hydrogen or oxygen? Basically, here is 4.3, here is 1, here is 13.3, and here is 2.171. So, definitely, this is the smallest value. So, for carbon, what we we'll simply do here is this. Let's divide by the smallest, and let's see our value. We know that the mole ratio of carbon is 4.345. So, we are dividing through by the smallest, and the smallest is oxygen. Okay, this is the smallest. So basically, we are dividing through which is our 2.171. So let's hold on. Let's quickly write. So we first start calculating 13.3 over the smaller, which is 2.171. Okay, here is 2.171 over the same, the smaller, which is 2.171. So let's see what we get as our answer to the mole ratios. So for the first one is 4.345 over 2.171. That is 2. Okay, so it's 13.3 over 2.171, which is 6. Okay, 6. And lastly, it's going to give us 1. So, what becomes the mole ratio of the following elements in the compound? It is basically 2, 6, and 1. So, what becomes the empirical formula of the compound? The empirical formula of the compound from our mole ratio. Empirical formula becomes okay. Now looking at carbon from the question carbon. Carbon mole ratio is two. Looking at hydrogen, what's the mole ratio? It is six. And looking at oxygen, what's the mole ratio? It is one. So this can also be written as six is eight six o. So this is the empirical formula of the compound. So you can see we are done calculating for empirical formula. So let's quickly move over to calculating the molecular formula of this compound. It is very easy. Just follow the steps and you get the correct answer. So after all of this, I'm going to give you your question to practice with and provide the answer in the comment section below. And if you are new here, you do well to hit the subscribe button and also share my videos with your friends. Thank you very much. So let's quickly move over to the next part of this question. Now let's quickly move over to the second part of this video, calculating the molecular formula of the compound. Before we calculate the molecular formula of this compound, there's a formula we must take note of which we'll be using to solve. It is empirical formula, empirical formula. Recall we just determined the empirical formula and this is the empirical formula. We write N, empirical formula N is equal to molecular formula. Empirical formula N is equal to molecular formula. I put it in a bracket. This thing I just wrote like this can also be written as empirical mass, empirical mass N is equal to molecular mass. Empirical mass N is equal to molecular mass. So recall, how do we calculate empirical mass? And you know already we'll be given the molecular mass. And what's the molecular mass? The molecular mass is 1 
38.204 grams per mole as seen in the question. So what we simply do now is to calculate the empirical mass, okay, the empirical mass from the empirical formula. So this is the empirical formula. It is basically C to H6O. So let's calculate the empirical mass by just solving the empirical formula. The empirical formula is basically C to H6O. So let's calculate the empirical mass now. You just see carbon 12 times how many atoms? Two atoms of carbon plus hydrogen one, okay? Times how many atoms of hydrogen? Six plus oxygen 16. So when we hit our calculator, we're going to get 46 grams per mole. This is our empirical mass. And already the molecular mass is already given in the question, which is 138.204 grams per mole. So let's quickly impute into our formula this formula now. Empirical mass basically is given to be one, sorry, is given to be 46 grams per mole. So we just say 46. Um, and it is equals to the molecular mass, which is of uh, 138.204. So we divide by the coefficient, which is 46, and divide by the coefficient, which is 46. Cancel. So what happens now is 138.204 dividing 46. So what are we getting? We are getting the end value because we are dividing this now, the end value to be 3. So you can see the end value from this equation is 3. So what do we do finally? It's just to come back to your previous equation and say, what was the empirical formula? The empirical formula given, empirical formula, Okay, I said N is equal to molecular formula. So what was the empirical formula? The empirical formula basically is C2H6O. And now what is the value for N we've got in 3? You can see it here. So basically, what happened in this thing is going to affect a bit. So we get the chemical formula for the molecular formula as seen in question B. So 3 is going to affect everything inside the bracket. So it becomes 3 times 2. That's 6, 6, 6. H that's 3 times 6 that's 18 O3. So this is the molecular formula of the compound. And I believe now this aspect is very, very interesting. It is very, very easy. It's just for you to follow the right pattern and solve and get the correct answer. So what will happen now is I'm going to provide the second question here. So you try and provide the answer in the comment section below. Now, this question, which is question two, is for you. So you solve and provide the answer in the comment section below. But before I leave you to solve this question, you have to take note of some things here. Now, if you check, they said, what is the molecular formula of an organic compound containing 40% carbon, 6.6% hydrogen, and the rest oxygen? What does it mean? It must be noted, first of all, that percentage is over 100. So definitely, since percentage is over 100. So inside this 100, we have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen, as seen in the question. So 100 will not be equal to, what's the percentage of carbon in the question? Okay, what's the percentage of carbon in the question? It is basically 40%. What's the percentage of hydrogen in the question? It's basically 6.6%, and the third plus the rest oxygen. So what you have to do is to just calculate for oxygen by making it subject of formula before you now solve. So let me help you do that. So 40 plus 6.6, that is the 46.6. That is 100%, percent be 46.6% plus percentage of oxygen. So what you do next for point to make it subject. So percentage of oxygen will now be equal to 100 minus 46.6%. So percentage of oxygen become that 100. Uh, minus 46.6, that is 53.4%. So this is the percentage of oxygen you'll be putting in that table and you solve the correct answer. I recall they said the question actually is asking for molecular formula. But before you actually get molecular formula, you need empirical formula. So just quickly follow the steps and get the answer to the question. It is very, very easy. I believe now you now understand better the concept of empirical formula and molecular formula determination. If you like this video, do well to subscribe to this channel and share my videos to your friends. Thank you very much. God bless you all.